One concept that can be a bit tricky to teach and learn is the difference between median, ulnar, and radial nerve palsies and how they're going to affect the muscles of the upper limb, especially in regard to the hand and the ability to grip. So if you can memorize what's affected, that's one way to get it down, but it's not as satisfying. So if you can just think to yourself, okay, if I have a median nerve palsy, I'll be unable to make a fist because my first, second, and third digit won't be able to completely curl inward causing what's called the hand of benediction sign, whereas if I have an ulnar nerve palsy and I try to make a fist, my fourth and fifth digit will kind of be left out of it and not able to curl in all the way because of the deinnervation of the ulnar side of the deep digital flexor. And if I have radial nerve palsy, I'm going to have wrist drop, or the inability to extend my wrist, which interestingly affects my flexor muscles because I can't bring my fingers together strongly unless I have a contrary extension to stretch those flexor tendons. So you can understand it that way, but I've been trying to come up with something else that would make it a little more understandable, and what I came up with after many years of agonizing over it is plastic. So I cut using my handy dandy bandsaw right over there a piece of hard plastic in the shape of a hand and then cut it so that I have the first, second, and third digits as well as the fourth and fifth. And what I'm going to do this incredibly complex setup is basically take a glove and then I'm going to take that insert and work it into the thumb, index finger, and middle finger. This is actually the toughest part of the whole process but it's a nice way to understand how these nerve lesions are actually going to affect someone. So now that the plastic insert is in there, rigid plastic insert I should mention, I'm going to put on the glove, making sure that the plate is on the palmar side. Now at this point, that plastic is going to prevent me from fully flexing my, let me get nice and in the center there, my first, second, and third digits. So this has given me a median nerve palsy. And that's an interesting thing to get down, but what makes it a little more real is trying to actually handle any kind of an object, this is kind of dangerous, with any real sense of sophistication or any ability to do fine motor skill with it. This should be a good one. I'm left-handed anyway, so holding a pen with my right hand, even without that is going to be a real challenge. Actually, uh, in college I broke my left hand and had to spend several months learning to write and take notes with my left hand, which was a lot of fun. So there we go, quick and easy way for median nerve palsy to be not only learned but understood. I can do the same thing with the right or left because it can really just be flipped either way but we can do the fourth and fifth digits, so ring finger and pinky finger, and get an equivalent ulnar nerve palsy. So in this case, I try to make a fist, first, second, third digits, they're okay, but I can't bring the other two down. This is sometimes known as ulnar claw, claw hand, ape hand, I'm not 100% sure what the derivation of those are, but essentially my fourth and fifth digits are no longer able to come down and hold tight. That actually makes power grip, like with a hammer, very difficult because the bottom three fingers, third, four, and five, they're really involved in strong grip and just my index finger and middle finger aren't doing a great job here. Likewise, might be able to write, but I can't really control the pen as finely as I'd like because the other fingers really can't get out of the way and it just makes these tasks a little more difficult. So feel free to make a glove like this if you want to test yourself and see what it's like to have some of those motor dysfunctions as well as teach your students and have them guess which ones you have by doing a mock physical exam on you. Last and arguably least is this ugly thing. I couldn't come up with a glove that would work for this so instead I used some thermoplastic that I uh, heated up in some hot water and then molded to my own wrist which only hurt a lot not even being not even making a joke it was kind of painful but essentially I molded it to my flexed wrist and basically it forces the wrist into 
flexion. So it's mimicking the possibility of having a radial nerve lesion could be in the forearm or higher up, but it's definitely going to result in an inability to strongly extend the wrist. So I have hand or wrist drop occurring here, so I can't really go any further. And by being forced into flexion, like I said before, it paradoxically makes it harder to get a strong grip on something because your finger just can't really fully stretch in and flex the way they'd like because you're not able to counter them with some extension that stretches those tendons. So the more slack there is, the harder it is to actually get a full, strong contraction in this case. All right, so that's just a goofy teaching idea. Feel free to use something rigid. I don't recommend wood because splinters, but some hard plastic and some gloves can definitely make it easy to understand how those lesions are going to affect people. Hope this has been helpful and have a great day. Alright. Anybody else notice when I tried to play it cool when I dropped this and pretend nothing happened? Yeah. There's always something.